Hello and welcome to this quick overview of Hexographer 2, also known as Worldographer. I'm the creator of the program, Joe Wetzel. What you see in front of you is the screen that you get after you install and go through some license stuff. If you go to, if you then go to File New, you can set up a new map. Um, just talking about these really briefly, they should be familiar if you've used Hexographer 1. If you haven't, um, they should make some sense, but we'll go over them quickly. So hex orientation, how do you want your hexes to line up? Map projection, you can have a flat map or an icosahedral map, which is um, more integrated in Hexographer 2. Icosahedral map is a map that is kind of like a D20 that's been flattened, rolled out and flattened. Here I'm going to change the number of hexes wide and high in our initial map so that um, we get some value, so we have a smaller world that we're starting with um, just for the purposes of a demo. The hex width and height is a number of pixels. That's always a changeable, that's just a view thing. And then last in this column is a key new feature in Hexographer 2, which is the view levels, which is kind of like child maps built into one map file where you can have a world map, a continent map, and a, a kingdom map where each uh, level is, uh, say, six hexes across for every map, every hex in the map above, or some other number, six, five, 20, 10, 13, whatever number. I like to make my maps top down, so I start with world. On the other column here, how do you want your terrain to be generated? Do you want to have just all one terrain where you're going to draw in everything yourself if you have a particular concept in mind? You also, um, on the other hand, can create, uh, have the computer, have the algorithm create a world. These values are kind of set up to, to make an Earth-like world. Last here is uh, the terrain icons. We have the classic original edition D&D style icons as well as an isometric style. There's also a way to make a first, uh, sorry, the isometric style, I should say, is kind of a um, civilization computer graphics um, style, that computer game. Um, and then with the classic, you can actually go to a first edition style graphics if you start with classic and make some changes from there, which we'll be going over in another video. If I go ahead and go generate map, you can see here we've generated a map. Um, we've got kind of one super large continent, one smaller continent. I'm actually going to run through that again because I want to get something with a little bit more variety. The only settings that we had changed here was the 60 and the 30. So we go here. Yeah, I like that one better. So you kind of have kind of maybe four or five continents there, depending on how you want to call the, these here. There might be some, these might be two land masses that join together to give you another one. Anyway, um, so because we're doing this on, on a smaller display for the video recording purposes, let me tweak the widths of some of these. Um, you can pan around the map by clicking on the overview area and then just dragging the corner of the overview. Um, if you're familiar with Hexographer at all, um, the drawers on the side are very similar to the tabs that we had in the past. If you want to place terrain, just click the terrain type you want and then click and drag on the map. How you want it. Um, however, uh, and what you're seeing here, so this is some of the isometric terrain stuff. You can filter that down by going classic on the filter. You can also filter by uh, typing in the in the box. Um, we can select terrain though to get details about that. So I can click a particular hex and I can see what's the elevation and what's the amount of animals, crops, or other resources on a scale of zero to 100. And that drives another feature that we'll see shortly. Um, I'm going to come back up here to the top, close that drawer, go to the features. Um, now I've got many icons installed on here for the purposes of demoing. I've got some Dwarven things and Roman things and stuff, and those are an expansion pack that was on our, to our Kickstarter backers who supported that. Um, but we'll be uh, making that available on our website shortly as well. However, I'm jumping down to the classic Mistara things, and if you like those styles, um, you can just click on the map where you want it. Click the terrain type, click on the map where you want it. Likewise, um, you can pull up details. We can select one of those, like the ruins, we can select it and we can pull up notes about this. So every time we place those things on the map, it, it generates some, um, some data about that, which you're free to change, ignore, delete, whatever you want to do. Um, but that's kind of cool. And it does that right now for castles, cities, and ruins. We'll be expanding that to other things as we go forward. We can also, though, uh, resize and rotate these um, on the map with these little controls. So that's nice. 
um, and we'll see a little bit more of that shortly as well. Um, I'm going to actually delete that and select the other one and delete that because I'm going to show you now um, the world info and then that's going to generate some other stuff. So in addition to, to those details that we saw with the ruins, um, we're also generating a bunch of data about your world when we create the map for you. Um, you can ignore this, you can regenerate it all, or you can edit it and tweak it to what you want. You can here, initially you can type in some intro stuff about your world, um, but then we've created a number of cultures for the world, which kind of um, allow us to pick a language and, and to um, drive naming conventions off of the language. Uh, this will be expanded. We're still in beta. As we go forward, this will be expanded. You'll have five or 10 bullet points there. Um, those get used to create the nations. So you can see that they're based on cult, you know, a culture or two. Um, and we have some bullets about each of these nations, which again, will be expanded as we move forward into a 1.0. Over here in religions, you can get particular ones that have, you can have mystical religions, demon sects, you can have pantheons and you have some again some stub information bullet points you can expand these um, as we go into 1.0 we'll be fleshing out particular holidays like maybe they have a, a great victory holiday on may 1st and you can even make up some fantasy month as well if you'd like to um, anyway so that's what the world information does for us um, up here with data though we can also generate nations and empires on the map so we'll take that list of nations and initially there were 16 there now i know we picked a smaller map so i'm going to actually set this to um, six nations otherwise there'd be a lot of overlap on a smaller map we could delete some of those other nations we can consider those nations to be empires from long ago if we want to um, but here it will place a few nations on the map for us and it uses that terrain information to um, place each city and uh, place an initial city I should say and then it tries to build out from there and a few hexes away it tries to find some good locations for other cities or towns or villages or other things that it can put on the map and uh, it keeps going until it stops until it doesn't find any good locations that fit the the algorithm um, now if you like the uh, I'm gonna go shapes next and if you I'm gonna show you some shape editing if you like the classic uh, Mistara maps you can select the, the border, for example, and you can set it to have no fill, and you can set it to be uh, dark red, set the color, maybe a darker red, I should say. And so you can get the feel of the classic Mistara maps by doing something like that. Um, you have a lot more other options for editing here. You've got drop shadows, inner shadows, box blurs ways to cap off the lines or join the lines all those things allow you to kind of you know just have a, a prettier map if you will um, i'm also going to show um, the last drawer down here the text labels so if we want to have a new text label and say we've got the the sea of dread of course right sea of dread and we want to give that a geography style place that on the map you can then select that and because it's a particular style we can't resize it but we can easily move it and place it rotate it um, so that's a lot easier than it is in hexographer one and that's really cool um, in addition to that we have a couple of new features around coasts and rivers so we can generate coasts which will just add some add a bit of land around every every one of your uh, hexes that'll be expanded as well to give you some more variety but uh, it's a good good first cut um, generating rivers you can pick a number and it'll it'll look at the va values um, for the terrain and, and make sure your rivers are going downhill you won't see them going you know up to um, up the mountains they're coming down so you got that um, and a bunch of these other features have been in hexographer for a while the terrain wizard does nearest neighbor fill converting an underlay attempts to trace over a map for you that you've set up with tracing an image down here on the bottom um, but the next main thing to show you is the view levels so here we've got um, we're on the world level right now we can jump down to a continent level and we can say we want six to one 
So this is going to create a new map level where it fills in six hexes across for every hex that we had in the parent map. And that will show up even better when we turn the grid on here. So you've got all of this here. You can see what it all looks like. Um, we can do that again. We can go kingdom. And for the purposes of the demo, I'm going to make this a three to one. You'll also be able to see a kind of, you know, you'll be able to see it a little bit better with the grid when I pick a different value as well. But it goes through a bunch of uh, setup. Um, this can take a while if you've got a larger map, but uh, we tested it uh, with four gigabytes of, of memory allocated to Hexographer and uh, made it perform well at that point. So here you can see the map level within a map level within a map level. Um, and that's what the, the functionality for the uh, view levels looks like. We can um, zoom in some, oh, yeah, zoom out, I should say. We can zoom out some so that you can kind of get a good feel of what that looks like. Um, you can bounce back up to the world level and that will zoom in to kind of get you back to what we had seen initially. So that's the quick overview of the new features in Hexographer 2. Um, and I hope the tool you know, allows you to create great maps. Um, tune in soon for more videos where we go over um, individual features in a lot more detail. Thank you.